Oh, oh that's, that's very tempting. Would the material be any different? <laughs> I mean, would, would there be less material on it because of the time? It will be, di it will be different, yeah. Okay, because more concentrated. If we wait until October 2nd, probably there will be more material. Yeah, okay. we should do the yeah. Okay, so October okay. 23rd. September 23rd. Okay, okay, so everybody's great. So in two weeks, on Tuesday, we're going to have that. Yeah. Okay? Uh, question. Will we have the study guide? No. I'm the study guide. I'm going to keep the study guide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're going to go home each one of us? And, 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 uh, I'm going to talk about the midterm before the, the, you know, the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you how should you study. Okay. okay. Now, will we have a chance to do just like our homework? Not two times. No, no, no. Exam is never two times. It's only one time. And also the time. Okay. It's class. You have one hour, 15 minutes to do it. So, we gotta leave. We gotta leave. At least I tried, y'all. <laughs> okay, somebody called you to ask that question. <laughs> okay, guys. And uh, let's start. We're still on chapter four. Okay. We're still on chapter four. Last class, we talked about. Um, um, Okay. Last class, I introduced the model and to derive the consumer equilibrium. I said in the model, there are two com there are two elements. The first element is <laughs> the first element is. You remember the first element of the model? It's budget constraint. Okay, now we have a graph, it's called budget line to describe it, right? And the things that affect the budget line are income and the price of good X and the price of good Y, right? Okay, so that's the budget line. So that's the first element. And what's the second element of the model? Utility. Utility, your satisfaction from consumption. And also we learn a curve to describe you know, a same la utility level. What is the name of that curve? Indifference, Indifference curve. Okay. And we we'll learn that for each individual, you have infinite number of indifferent curves, and each indifferent curve represents a different level of utility as you, you move outward and the utility level increases. Okay. So that's the second element, right? And after that, we combine these two elements together, we derive the what? We combine these two elements together, we, we, de we derive the consumer equilibrium right. point, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the consumer equilibrium point? Spend all of their money. It's the best, it's the best way to allocate your money in, in these two groups. But that's the way to allocate money and uh, 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 in, mm, in the students. So which means if you spend your money that way, then you are maximizing your total utility. The best way to allocate your money in these two groups. Okay. And I told you there are two conditions. There are two conditions for the consumer equilibrium. What are these two conditions? One is a mathematical condition, right? What is that one? You want the formula? I want the formula. That's right. Isn't it uh, mu x over mu y? Uh-huh. Absolute value of that equal to? Yeah, so like that. That's right. This is a uh, slope, mm -hmm. and for the indifference curve, at a point, and this is the slope of budget constraint. Okay, so that's how you combine the two elements in the model together. Okay, so this is one of the conditions for the consumer equilibrium. What is the other condition? Enough. We, we discussed this. Uh, spend, all the money. spend all your income. Okay, with this two condition, and um, we guarantee that, and you are using and you are choosing uh, 
and the best way okay, to spend your money on these two groups. Well, let's have the, the second unit, um, PXRPO, that's a slope of what? Yeah, the budget. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we finished intro, I, fin I finished the introduction of the model. Okay, so today we're going to do some applications using the model, using the theory. Okay? So the first application we're going to do is we're going to com compare um, three different scenarios. Okay? One scenario is this. In the store, you know, you want to buy uh, two different goods. You want to buy either pizza or um, cantaloupe. And uh, but there is a marketing strategy. There is some um, sale going on for the pizza, and uh, it says that if you buy one or more than one pizza, you're gonna get one for free. So if you get one pizza, you can get one free. You get two pizza, you also can get one free. Okay, but the maximum amount of the free pizza you can get is just one. All right. And this pizza costs $5 each. Okay, that's one scenario. The second scenario is you found a coupon from the newspaper. And you can only use this coupon to buy pizza. And this coupon can get you a free pizza. Okay, clear? That's the second scenario. And the third scenario is that now, somebody give you a $5 gift card that you can use this $5 gift card in the store to buy anything you want. So we're going to compare these three scenarios. Let me repeat these three scenarios, okay? There's two groups you want to buy. You either want to buy a cantaloupe and a pizza. Pizza costs $5 each. Cantaloupe costs $5 each. Okay, and the store has this sale going on. If you get one or more than one pizza, and you're going to get a free one, okay? That's the first scenario. The second scenario is that you get a coupon from the newspaper. With this coupon, and you can get a one free pizza. Okay, the third scenario is that somebody give you a $5 gift card that you can spend, This you can use this gift card on uh, any good in the store. Why do I want to compare these three scenarios? See which one's the best value? Because if you look at the uh, monetary values, monetary values of the additional good you're able to get, they all equal to what? Five dollars. Okay. Either they give you one free pizza, or you can get used coupon, or you can use coupon. It's all five dollars. But since they are in a different form, it makes the budget constraint different. So that's the first thing we're going to analyze. How those different scenarios affect the budget constraint? Because they're all going to look different. Even the monetary value is exactly the same. Okay, that's the first thing we're going to look at. The second thing is, I want you to, I want to give you this option. If you are given option of these three different choices, which one will you choose? Gift card or time. You're going to choose gift card. Why? Because you got you five dollars to choose on either good. Mm -hmm. So he said he's going to choose the gift card because gift card, you probably can give you higher utility eventually than the other two choices. So the second question we're going to discuss is, is it true? In all incidences, or is it true on some cases? So we're going to discuss that, okay? And, and we're going to utilize everything we learned from last class, budget constraint and indifference curve. Okay, and I want to um, uh, remind you again what is indifference curve. Indifference curve represents somebody's preference. 
Okay, in this instance, we have cantaloupe and pizza. Somebody really love pizza. Okay, a lot of you probably do. Okay, somebody like me don't care for it very much. You know, if these two goods are present to me, I probably more likely choose the cantaloupe. But that's my preference. So my indifferent curve is going to look very different from some of you. And that determines which option, which scenario I will prefer. Okay? So that's what we're going to discuss. So first, let's look at how the budget constraint is different, you know, among these two different scenarios. So the first one. Okay. Uh, first, I have to give you um, an income. So suppose we just start very simple. <coughs> we say you just have a ten dollar income. Okay. And um, say so this X here represent pizza, and uh, this represent cantaloupe. Is it how steps spell it? Cantaloupe? Sure, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's say most goods price is five dollars. Let's just make it simple. So if they say, you know, we do not have that uh, promotion going on in the store, you just have ten dollars and you have, you know, the prices of this two goods and that that. What does the budget constraint look like? It's very straightforward. What's the number here? What's the number here? Five, five, five. That's getting ten and ten. Right? What the number here means? How many? So how many? Two, uh, how many cantaloupe can you get? How many? Uh, two. What's the number here? Two. So I'm going to draw this budget constraint. So this is the budget constraint if there's no promotion or coupon or whatever going on. Okay, so now there is a promotion. <coughs> the promoter said, if you buy one or more than one pizza, you can get a free one. How do we adjust this to accommodate the new information? So buy one, get one free? Yeah, so this first one is a free pizza if you get one or more than one pizza. So you, if you get two pizza, you still just get one free pizza. You know, the store not, not going to give you two free pizza. So the maximum amount you can get is free. So how do we adjust this budget constraint to accommodate this promotion? What is budget constraint? Remember, budget constraint is it's a it's a borderline between the possible and the impossible. Okay? So because of this promotion going on, the possibility is different. So now we need to adjust. Give you 30 seconds to think about it. Okay. Well, then shift over to the right. Or Where? The How? Pizza. Well, it would. The pizza would shift over to the right since you know the quantity pizza is going up. Mm -hmm. So, so it, how do we shift right now? Where where you we started? You shift right. All of them? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, 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 just just the pizza. Just the pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. This is a lot too, but pizza's at three. So there's one here. Yeah. Yes. Here. Yeah. Yes. So what is a new budget constraint line include? What it consists of? This part mm -hmm. and this part, including this point, but does not include this.
then you just draw oh. a whole another different line to the top. Can I what? Can't you just create a whole another different line? Can I draw that? Well, no, I meant like from the three to the two, you can't just make a brand new line, straight line instead of dotted. Do you know what I'm saying? No. That's all right. Don't try, try it out again. <laughs> Don't give up. Try to make yourself a... <clears throat> all right, you see how you made the dotted line to go out to the to, um, point where you get three pizzas? You mean here is dotted? Yeah. Yeah, I was saying, can't you just make a brand, a whole new, brand new line? Oh, yes, I could. I could use this one. Blue pen. To make it better look. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Not better on this, I understand it better. Okay. All right. now change here, right? Because you're not buying any pizza, so you're not going to get benefit. You're only going to start getting benefit when you get one more free pizza. Start from here. So from here to here, you're going to benefit from this one free pizza. So this part of the body line is going to be shifted toward the right. Okay? And it does not include this point, but will include this point. So the body constraint, body line, for the first scenario, include these two parts. Triangle on that one? Or include this part and also this part, oh, okay. including this point yeah. here. So straightforward enough, or do you guys need more? Need ask me a question? Do anyone do? I got a quick question. Sure. Um, all right, so if that line represents any given point, yeah, so you wouldn't be able to buy two and a half pizzas and get one and a half Very good point. Very good point. I'm just, I mean, I'm not trying to. No, 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 no. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yes. In, in the in the real world, yes, you cannot get a half pizza. That represents this. Okay. So yes, you cannot get half. But you know, let's assume we're able to get half. We're allowed the decimal. Then if that's the case. Sure. But in the reality, mm -hmm. no. Actually, it's only a few points. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Good. Good. All right. So now let's look at the second scenario, which is you get a coupon. Of a free pizza. And first, I still want to have the original body line here, two and two. So now, for this case, how are you going to adjust it? You get a coupon. You can take this coupon and trade for a free pizza in the store. Um, you don't have to buy anything to get a free pizza now. You can just get a free one. Would it shift your whole middle line to the right? It should shift all everything to the right because you really don't need to get one to buy one. So every point along this line here, so every combination there, for every consumption combination there, you're able to have one more free pizza with a coupon. So the whole line <coughs> is going to be shifted to the right by one unit. This is different. This two party line is totally different. Mm -hmm. 
this right here. Okay. So everyone is following me, right? Everyone is following me? Okay. Now let's look at this third option. You get a gift card, which is $5. So now, how do we change the budget line? The you can income increase five dollars, so the budget comes. That's right. Now it's like you have five more dollar for the income, right? Mm -hmm. When you have more income, what will happen to the budget line? It's going to shift the parallel, right? Mm -hmm. So here you're going. To, it's going to be three. Here it's going to be three two, right? Mm -hmm. Because you are able to uh, use this key card on good one as well, so that's why you have this part of the line. Unlike this case, you don't have that part because you cannot use that to spend on the other goods. But you okay. So, so that's the three different budget strings for these this three different scenarios. As you can see, it shows you the different options, different possibilities. So now. We're going to add indifference curve back into it. And we're going to utilize indifference curve to discuss which scenario is better. So there's several questions I want to ask. Which scenario you should choose that you will never be worse off? Listen to the, listen to the question that I just said. Which scenario you should choose where you will never be worse off? Not necessarily better than the other two, but you will be never worse off. The three, the third one. But there are some scenarios that actually you are actually you. This, this three will be equivalent. There's some scenario, this three will be equivalent. But there's some scenario, this choice is definitely better than these two. So first, I want you to find this a situation, find that a particular individual will make this choice strictly better than the other two choices. Three, three. So okay. Okay, I'm gonna say. So right now we're going to add indifference curve back in. What the indifference curve represent? Represent the person's reference. Yeah. So I want you to find a one person's particular reference. We'll make this person strictly prefer this choice than the other two. Right in the middle of that line. Oh. So you want to come here, draw? Yeah. We have to do the drawing in order to see it. Yeah. It's a tangent, I guess. Yeah. Where's just that point right there? Draw the curve across that point. Um, I'm so just barely, just barely touch it. Like, draw the indifference curve. From the middle. Oh, you mean like? Draw the indifference curve. So you're pointing out this is like a consumer <coughs> division, right? You look right. So then draw the indifference curve across that thing. So, uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I want to guess about that. No, no, so it's the indifference curve the looks this way. Look this way. Let me do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Indifference curve looks like that, right? Yeah. And each one represents a different level of utilities. <clears throat> okay? So if you point out this is a consumer equilibrium point, then indifference curve have to like cross that. Okay. Alright. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay, that's good. That's analyze. So since he draw an indifference curve, 
and this is in this one person has has a shape and also has a its own location. That means he has identified a, a particular individual. Okay. Now let's look at this individual. Okay. If this individual have this choice for the gift card, that is the equilibrium, right? Okay. Now, since we're not changing the individual, and that means in, the indifference curve will be exactly the same. We're going to copy this indifference curve right here. See whether this person will be strictly prefer this one than that one or not. So I would say so this point is right here is is somewhere here. It is So what does it tell you? And it doesn't doesn't matter though. They're both the same. It means that with this choice, he's able to reach level the utility like this. Mm -hmm. That's called utility um, U hat. Okay, this level of utility. Okay, that's the highest utility this guy can reach. Mm -hmm. And we copy the same indifference curve right here. And uh, this indifference curve also tangent to T, right? Mm -hmm. So which means you can use, uh, so you can have the same combination of the two good and also reach this level of utility. So it'd be someone who can afford three cantaloupes this situation. So in this case here, if we're talking about this individual, this individual actually indifferent between these two choices, right? Because they can reach use hat in both cases. Do you see that? I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, now how about this case? Would, he, would this particular individual, let's call this individual N, okay? Would N be able to reach U hat given this budget constraint? No. So if we copy this, the same indifference curve right here, this indifference curve you had would be just float on top of this budget constraint. So this individual N will prefer these two and that one. Okay. Can you explain the one? Top right again. This one here? Yes. Okay. So, you know, this is the highest utility level this person can reach. You had. So, what we're going to do is we copy this very, um, this very inverse curve on this graph because we're talking about the same person. Okay. So, when we copy this right here, and it's going to be tangent to this part of line at exactly the same point. Why? Because if you look at this, basically what you have here is this part, right? Since this, this curve here is tangent to this part and it will be tangent to this part at the same point. Okay, so since this indifference curve is tangent to the budget line in this scenario, that means N is able to reach your head by having a coupon the same utility level that you, he, she would be able to reach, right? But what if the indifference curve is, uh, in the second graph is higher than that, the blue line, it won't get tangent. So you mean the location is different, right? Yeah. Okay, so now that's, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Okay, so now we find this case, okay. So let's say uh, this is case three is equivalent to case two, but strictly better than case one, right? Okay. How about this one? I want you to find an individual that is case three, is greater than case two, is greater than case one. So which means this individual is strictly prefer this scenario. So the utility level he's able to get from here cannot be reached from the, by using the other two constraints. Somebody's utility is higher than Y. Okay, so somebody want to come here to draw that person? Yes, you can do it. Come. I'll bring this one up. <laughs> I, I didn't 
this utility level you had by using you know um, a gift card five dollar gift card but if we copy the same in difference curve and this in difference curve will be right here and that cannot be reached by the second budget constraint and also cannot be reached by the first budget I want you to think about what kind of individual this one is. Is this the, because here we talk about preference, right? Mm -hmm. You know, still people's preference. What kind of the, what does this shape of indifference curve tell you about this this person's preference in terms of these two goods? That's me. <laughs> Prefer cantaloupe, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot get cantaloupe from this too, but I can do it here. Right. So we are good with this. Now let's look at this. Uh, how about case three? I have a question. Uh huh. In this case, you're getting if you buy one piece, you get one free, right? Uh huh. So. You would never really have three candles and have only one pizza because you'd always have one more pizza because you get one free. So. But it was this case, I can get uh, three candles. And two pizzas, right? And you see what I mean? The stipulation of the part of the third one. So you wouldn't get about one pizza free on the third one. She's just a five dollars. She's assuming that's a whole different scenario that you uh, just get. Okay. Uh, yeah. or Okay. What makes case two better than case one, though? Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. Okay, so we're going to... Last scenario is... Well, just now, the, what our first graph is the case that case two is better than case one. So when the graph is, is right here, Okay, if this represents this person's reference in different curve, then you can copy the same in different curve and be tangent to this line as well. And but you know, with we have to be careful, make sure this tangent point is above the one. Okay. And if that's the case, you would copy right here. It will be on top of this budget constraint. So you are able to reach this utility level you had from coupon and gift card, but you're not able to um, reach that with this free pizza. Because this indifference will be float on top of the budget constraint. But this very same indifference curve can be touched, it's tangent to their budget line. Okay. Okay, so next scenario is what? Case three is equal to case two is equal to case one. What kind of person we're talking about now? Pizza. <laughs> you guys like pizza, right? The pizza lovers. Pizza lovers, they don't care. You here, you can get a free one. Here, you get free pizza. You can get. So the pizza lovers, what the indifference curve look like? The curve is below the price of uh, yes. the quantity of. Yeah. 
And you really want to come here and draw it? Let's have a volunteer too. He volunteer you. <laughs> oh, <but> come on. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend just <laughs> volunteer you. Piece of lovers in different curves. So, which means we'll make him indifferent between the three choices. So, uh, which means that indifferent sure. curve is tangent. Would it be down here? It would. Yeah. Out to China. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Good. Okay. So, this indifferent curve will be tangent to this part. If it's tangent to this part, then it's going to be tangent to this part. And it's going to be tangent to this part. Okay, so that's the piece of our we're talking about. So in case three, you say you get the five dollar the, the five dollar gift card. Yeah. So you just get all pizza and no cantaloupe? Or do you get You can get a cantaloupe too. This gift card. Okay, so you basically have one cantaloupe and Three pizzas. No, 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 no. If you use it on cantaloupe, you can just get a straight cantaloupe. <coughs> so you use it all on pizza. Oh, you can use it all on pizza. We'll get three pizza, right? Okay, either three cantaloupe or three pizza or two cantaloupe, one pizza, one cantaloupe, two pizza. It's like you have five dollar more to spend. So the way you ask to all the choices. Do we have other choices? Well, in which they're all equal? They have probably about the only choice. Unless you put that tangent. We don't, there. yeah, I think we exhaust all the choices, right? There's no other choices. There's no other scenarios, I mean. No. Hmm? Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no there's <coughs> one more. Why, why nobody sees, sees that? Wait, is it is there, there the, is one more scenario. Is it on the original one or no? Is, is yeah. It is? Okay, so what is the last scenario? The last scenario would be the tangent going uh, you, you try this use uh, this relationship. Okay. Um, case three, case two, case one, what how do we rank them? How do we what's their relationship look like? Okay. <laughs> you, 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 you put them all. No, 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 no there's one there's more. One more. But wait, it is on the original line, isn't it? Or no? On, on the, the two, the two line? Or no. You can't read, that's not maximizing utility. Equal. So this one is definitely better than this one, but you're indifferent between these two. So where does that indifference curve locate? Think about it. <laughs> This is definitely better. But you're different between this one and this other. This is practice your critical thinking. Do not think this is just graph. No. No, this is just critical thinking thinking practice. I mean, if anything, it's going to be two pizzas and one cantaloupe straight across the dog line. Right? Mm -hmm. This will be very uh, unique. Actually, I'm looking for it as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be a case in which case three. Still, it's still the obvious choice, but then better than D. Yeah. 
in the case two. Yeah, two two and one have to be the same. So well, there's that would be the only place that would be the the single. So so the second blue line on the first case in conjunction with that blue line in case two. So which means okay, let's start with case three. Case six, case three is definitely better. Right. Okay, if the case three is definitely better, then the indifference curve that is tangent with case three must must be here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so that else? is that is for sure. Okay. Right. Okay. So we know that's the that's where this tangent. Okay. And but how about the uh, utility level that is reached by this guy? How can you be safe? Well, I mean, you're gonna have to put two to three between two to three. They have to be same. Yeah. You want to try it out? Yeah. I, I guess I. I don't know. You know. Say it again. I I did not get. Um, because the case one equal case two, so you have to be in the same place, and the only same place between them is between two and three. The line between two and three. Mm -hmm. right. So it has to be there. Mm -hmm. But right. I don't know where. Any, anywhere along the line. It would yeah. be anywhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Would be anywhere. So let's say. Um, okay, so. When is, it, when is one tangent just hit that, I got that you. top thing, uh, the top you of got the line? It? I got it. Right out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our friend said, mm -hmm. That's right, anything right there, right there, right? But, but yes, but you see that, well, that's a good point. However, give me this plan here, all right. If you have an uh, indifference curve tangent to this part, so right. which means yeah. this is right yeah. here, yeah. then you, you yeah. cannot have a two indifference curve cross each other, it has to. You know what I'm saying? It cannot be crossed. It, it, it's, it's because if crossed, that means you know you have the same point. Then the same point cannot lie on two different in different curves. Okay, so that, yeah. I'm not sure what you're asking. Well, me. but because that because wouldn't that be? So this is impossible. We cannot have a different curve to tangent to this part. Well, try it out. There must be a solution. Just keep thinking. Where we get it, I'm gonna get extra credit. Okay. Oh, right. mm -hmm. Give you some incentive to, <laughs> to figure this out. In which case three outweighs the other two, but you can get the same situation in all three graphs, is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe depend on oh. well, I mean, you, do you have to maximize the utility? Yes, yeah, yeah. You have to. The maximum maximum <laughs> have to spend all your money. Do they exist? Well, there's not one. That's, I mean, you've exhausted the reaction. Oh, the negative, yeah. So, yeah. You're talking about this point here? Yeah. You're talking about this? You're no. Try it? Well, that would be it. That one's the point. That one's the point. Let's try it out. I'm not sure either because I saw. I was thinking about that point as well. Okay? So, so it will be this point, right? So here you guys are talking about. But that point wouldn't be any different than any other point down to three. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. talking about a tangent to this point, then that 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 no. If you are doing this, then this will cross with this indifference no. curve again, right? Oh, that's two. Hmm? You gotta go down to one. See how that, see how the one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, no, but it would still cross. Oh, I found it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You guys were close. It's related to this point. Yeah. That, that point. Do you want to come here? I, you know, that would be easier. Come here. It's, Show it. I, it's on the original one. I think about two points. The first point is here, and it's not correct. I think about this point, but I cannot point this point out because it's. It, it should be this point because this point is much lower. Will give you lower utility. It, it must be it must be point along this part, yeah. yeah. Because if you use this point, the mm -hmm. utility level is more, more likely it's going to be lower. Mm -hmm. So I can give you guys hint. It's related to this point, but it's just how to draw it. 
how to draw it? Try out. But we just now know this does not work, right? We, we know this does not work, right? Because if this, if this crack, again, you're going to cross with this, so it's not right. So try it again. All right, so would it be, is it, would it sweep the other way? I mean, can you draw this? Uh-huh. Let's try out this. Well done. How about that? Okay, let's try this out here. Does it work? <laughs> um, we've never seen our utility where it crosses the first time. Okay, I have to see. Okay, I'm going to make this. <laughs> okay, let's try this out. Let's see if it works. Because if that's the case, if that's it. Okay, I got you. Alright. All right. So if it, if it followed, I'm with it. So if, if it lined up with that, rest, with that bottom <laughs> thing like that, just like you're doing there. But this this is okay because we we know this will be this will be lower than that, right? Yeah. So that's for sure. But my only question right now here is, and this this will be fine as well. So that will be fine. This will be the highest, and this one would definitely definitely be lower than that. But my only concern here is whether that is the highest utility level this guy can reach. Uh -huh. that was you got a different question. Yeah, you got a different point. You got a different indifference curve drawn on the top right graph than you do the bottom. See how it intersects with, with two and two on the bottom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it intersects. With oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the different. Yes, you're right. This is not this one. I think it's this one here. Yeah. Yeah, so. There we go. Analysis scale. Yeah, but you see, that is, I, I, I'm now certain about this. Because we can keep right, keep, you know, moving this in different curve, then if it is shaped like this, then eventually you're going to have another one. So which means this one actually is going to be higher than that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So how about I make it into extra credit homework? Whoever fund it. Get astro credit. But then that wouldn't that wouldn't <laughs> satisfy. Okay, the next one that you drew. Uh -huh. right? Now go back to your original graph. It will not it won't satisfy graph one. So that's right. Because graph one cannot reach that one. Exactly. So, so it still is not this scenario. So which means either the way we draw this here, we can make this one higher than this one. Which means we have to make this one higher than this one. Yeah, we Does it have to be that shape, or it can, can it be a different? The shape, shape? can be all different. See, I mean, it's probably it's probably the shape. <clears throat> it's the shape and also the. <laughs> but I, I I know there must exist. Okay, so. Well, in that case, if we're, I don't. I mean, the only place where two and three are equal is where the slope's the same between one and three, or. One oh. Y and three. You mean two pizza. and one equal or two and three? Wait, two what, happens, what happens if we flip um, their slopes to only at the same point? Which way? Okay, I'm confused. Yeah, yeah, what you're talking about? Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. They cannot be. No, it can. Um, the only place where their slopes are equal, and that's equal throughout all three graphs. Yeah. Slope. Well, maybe the, it's it's she's negative. 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 She said we can switch. She said we can switch. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Can can those can it have no curve whatsoever can be a straight line. The indifference curve. Yeah, could be. We talk about that straight line, right? Well, then draw. A, I just draw a straight line straight from three. Okay, on your graph one. See graph. Come here, draw it. I miss so much. I'm confused. We come here, draw straight. Yeah, it can be a straight line. Yes. Where? Tell me where a straight line is at. Well, then can you just? I'm not gonna do it. But just draw a straight line all the way down through there. <laughs> That'd be the same indifference curve that it never intersect. So in that way, you could go here. And it would never intersect with anything up here, any other indifference curve. It would never intersect with another indifference curve here. It would be okay. completely. Okay. That's it. So let's draw this straight line. <laughs> so you're talking about a straight line, but it has to touch this part. That's right. I got you. So, like, so then it'd be right, straight down. That's uh, a straight line. Okay. <laughs> you're just. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit different. 
behind this, right? Okay. The difference curve, different shape represent the different individuals' preference. And the way that being different, and some people may prefer one, may prefer all of them, and some people may prefer two of them, some people may prefer only one of them. Okay, so it's all different. But this one, can you can never get worse by using this choice option here. Okay. Okay, so I think you guys have a really good grasp on the difference curve. Yes. Right? With all this practice. That's the point of it. All right, so, uh, so next. I do believe you have a homework. Yep. Um, Why? No, no, I have not signed the homework yet. And um, I thought chapter four chapter four is already on there though. Is it is it yeah. on there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh I forgot. Yeah. Which uh, one is due? Are you sure? No, I thought, I thought it was your own homework. No. Is it due? It's due on the 20th. It said it was due on the 20th. Yeah, sorry. But it's learn smart. You have yeah. a practice and the homework right around. Yeah, it's not graded one, right? right. Okay, I'm going, to, a yeah, I'm going to assign the graded one. Um, but I want to look at this question 17 because I think I did uh, assign that one. Okay, question 17. and bagel here. So that's why I'm using this. The Einstein Bagel Corporation offers a frequent buyer program whereby uh, a consumer receives stamp each time she purchases one dozen bagel for $6. After the consumer accrues 10 stamps, she receives one dozen bagel free. This offers is un unlimited offer, that is through the year. The manager knows her product, the normal goods. Given this information, construct a budget set for a consumer who has $200 to spend on bagels and other goods throughout the year. Does instant frequent buyer program have the same effect on the consumer of its bagels that would occur if it simply lowers the price of 1,000 bagels by 3%? That's page 158. Okay, so let me give you some basic information here. The income $200. And there are two goods. Okay, good X is a bagel. 
and good wide are the goods. They give you price of the one dozen bagel is six dollar per dozen. Okay, for good wide, did it give you the price? No, it did not give you the price. And also they tell you this, every time you buy a dozen, you can get one step, step. And when you have 10 step, then you can get a free dozen bagel. Okay, for each dozen you get one step. When you get 10 step, you can get a free bagel. So to answer the rest of the question, we do have to nail down the budget constraint. So this represents the dozens of bagel. And this is other. We don't know the price. First, we need to have the budget line without all this free, free, uh, frequent buyer program. Okay. And we do not know the price of Y, so we cannot determine what the value here, but we know it's somewhere here. And actually this value is, does not matter because the frequent buyer pro program does not apply to other goods, only apply to bagel, right? So how many dozen bagel you are able to buy with two hundred dollars? Okay. I should make it uh, actually bigger. It's, it's hard to see. Okay. Alright. So now we're gonna adjust this, accommodating the frequent higher problem. For each dozen, you can get a stamp. So when you buy 10 dozen, what's gonna happen? So when you get 10 by 10 dozen, actually you're gonna end up with 11 dozen, mm -hmm. right? So, and here. So how about this part of the line? Does it change? No. no. But what happened to this point? Shifts up to the right. Yeah, that point is going to shift to the right by. Okay, so this is actually 11. So we include this part, but now this point, we include this point here, okay? What next? What next? Okay. 
just look at this point here. What happens when you buy? We buy 20,000 bagels. Okay, 22, 000. You get 22,000 bagels. So this point here is shift to the right by two. What was the permission here? Huh? You get 10, okay. you get a free. Okay. So, so how do we shift this part of the curve? From 10 to 20, this part. It just moved it. Shift to the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but. Shift to the right by one unit. So here's 21. So this part we include. But again, we're not going to include this point. Because when you reach this point here, we're not going to include this point. You're going to have instead of twenty, instead of twenty-one bagel, you're going to actually have a twenty-two bagel. So this is circle. This is solid. This is solid. This is circle. Make sense? Okay. All right. Wait. So the lines on the twenty-one says twenty-two. But it stopped. So it stopped on twenty-two. Yeah, you stopped right here. You don't include it, but you're gonna include the next one because you're gonna have two more bagels now. Two more, da two, two more dozen. So twenty-one and twenty-two are the two free you got from twenty. This yeah. two is the two free ones. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm saying this gonna happen. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. So can you figure out what's gonna to happen to the thirty when you buy thirty? Hit you down to 31, but you're going to extend it to 33. Right? 32, yeah, 30. Mm -hmm. So you're going to buy it at 30, 30, and then you get to 33. Get so your line stops. So is this number 33.33 for sure? Yeah, sure. Sure? All right. Okay. Okay. So when you, at 30, by 30, you should get three more, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's somewhere here. Okay. And so for this part, 20 to 30, this part of line, it's going to shift two units. So it's all parallel. But you could, you do not include this point, you include that one. Right? I see it. Oh, wait, you connected from 22 to 33? Yeah, so okay. this is 22. Now, this is actually is 32 here. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. This so, is 32. So 22 to 32? 22 to 32, yeah. Okay. And the 33 is right here. Got it. And which, one, which ones are uh, open? This, yeah. always the left is open, and the right is solid. Okay. And, the, and why is that again? Because when you reach this point, you're going to again get one more dozen bagel for free. Right. So you're going to jump from here to here. Uh, oh, okay. Got it. 22. So there's 33. So the only open circles we should have are 10. At 10, 20, 10 at the 21. 10, 21, and, and the 32. 32, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's make several shift. First shift is this line is shift right by one unit. The second shift is by two unit. And the third shift is three units. Got it. Okay. 
and then you can finish the third part of curve, third part of line. So from here to here, this small part is going to be just like that. So this should be 30, 6.33. So basically you have shifted three different sections. This section, this section, and this section. This section you shift to the right by one unit. This section you shift to the right by two unit. And this section you shift to the right by three units. So this is a new budget line. Practice this, you know, you may you may understand part of uh, you know understand part of it, but when you go home, do this graphing again. You know. Okay. So then they ask you, okay, now our budget line looks like this. Is it going to have same e effect on consumption with bagel that would occur if it simply lowers the price of one dozen bagel by three percent? So they want you to compare the utility you're going to get by having a budget constraint like that. And with the scenario, if this price just lower 3%. So what it what would be lower? <laughs> so if you lower the price, okay, remember this is the good Y. And this is good X. When you lower the price, well, other things remain the same. What's going to happen to this budget line? She's right. And right. this point does not change, but this one is going to. It's going to shift this way, right? Okay. So, if you calculate this number here, okay, with the um, somebody calculate this this for me. Uh, five. 5.82. Okay, then use this 200. <laughs> 200 divided by 5.82. What is equal to? 30 what? Or something. I don't know. You gave me an accurate number because I want to see where it's located. Give me accurate. 34. Let's say it's 34. Okay? It's somewhere here. Okay, what I want to find that point is, I want you to see with this new scenario, where is budget line? The budget line is connect this point with this. So, if you connect it, wow. if you do it really accurately, it will lie underneath those three different sections. So the graph can tell you which scenario is better for you? Uh, From which scenario you will get a higher utility? Scenario A. Uh, scenario A, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to say what I was saying. Is it for sure? Yeah. It's for sure. Yeah. Just want to doubt you. <laughs> Okay, so because if you don't have this graph, you don't draw the graph, just give you this question, you cannot answer. You do not know. But what, by utilizing the graph, you see where the new budget line compared with the old one. You see the, the two scenarios of budget constraints, and you're able to answer, oh, I need to use, I need, I, I should prefer this frequent buyer program. That will make me happier than just lower the price. You know, so it's, you think, well, you think, you know, why are we doing all this graph? Well, this graph help you answer the question. You know, free, frequent buyer program is better than just lower, simply lower the price of good X. Okay, so in the midterm, that's the kind of question I'm going to ask you. I'm going to present this scenario, ask you, okay, which one, which option should you prefer? And you cannot see up front. What's the answer? You have to utilize the class. 
Remember, economics is all about graphing. You cannot hate graph <laughs> <laughs> in economic class. That's everything else. Okay, I want you to practice. I picked this question because I think this is the hardest one among all the homework questions. Okay, so you know what it's like. Is that a question included in our homework? Yes, it will be the new grade. Okay. And I want to mention again our tutor is on Tuesday from 9 to 11. And it's uh, in that uh, accounting lab. Oh, and also our midterm, first midterm. It's two weeks from t from today. Two weeks from today. Twenty third. Oh. So uh, next Thursday is that going to be the first Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. 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 Chapter two, chapter four, and uh, some of the. Yes, the, the next chapter, a little bit next chapter. I don't know which one is. So is it all part of No, no, no. All, all books are solved. No one for twice. Yeah. 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 Yeah.